I'm Chris Bauer, and I am an art slinger. I travel around the U.S. selling artwork at comic and anime conventions, and while I'm there, I like to check out cool sites, eat great food, and see all the places my favorite movies and TV shows are made. Welcome to Sets, Streets, and Eats. So I am in West Virginia, just outside of Huntington, and I'm about to go somewhere that's the last one of these in the USA. And this is something that I have very fond memories of, in a way, as a kid, and I'll explain that. But if this is any indicator, that Pizza Place logo behind me should give you something. I'm going to Billy Bob's Wonderland. Billy Bob's Wonderland. Let's go. I'm going to order pizza, as you do. So a little history. So back in the late 70s, uh, Nolan Bushnell, who was the founder of Atari, wanted to come up with a family place for an arcade to be, but the whole family would come out and play. So he came up with this pizza place idea that would have an entertainment aspect and an arcade, and the whole family could come out and enjoy it. So the entertainment aspect ended up being animatronic animals. So they put on a show, um, the old, uh, animatronics were basically waist up and they had um, like a lot of little props and stuff but they would do songs imagine it like a, an old puppet show is how it used to look um, and they called the place Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater um, it was a huge hit right out of the gate and it got the attention of an investor in Kansas City named Robert Brock um, Robert Brock was, owned several hotel franchises at the time and he thought this was a great idea so he invested and they got together um, and they start opening Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theaters all over the country. Within a very short amount of time, though, he found out about another animatronic company that was building something that was absolutely game-changing. And they were full-bodied animatronics, um, and that was Creative Engineering. And he realized that someone like Creative Engineering could come along and basically have a way better setup with their live entertainment and put Chuck E. Cheese's out of business. So he decided to be that guy. So Brock teamed up and started a new company with Creative Engineering. The company was split that he would provide the restaurants and they would provide the entertainment, the show. Uh, they split it 80-20, 20% going to Creative Engineering. 
they called the new company Showbiz Pizza Place. They started franchising right away and absolutely took off. Creative Engineering is the one that came up with the show Rockefeller Explosion, which is the three stage system that you see here. And this is how every showbiz was set up. This is how I remember my showbiz. I grew up in Flint, Michigan, and we were lucky enough to have a showbiz pizza place. And it was awesome. They had tunnels under the stage. And these three stages were set up and uh, with all these different characters led by Fats Geromino, the, the big gorilla on the uh, uh, pizza place, and of course, Billy Bob Broccoli right behind me, and uh, Mitzi Mozzarella, and a whole cast of others. What he ended up having is Atari fell on hard times and Chuck E. Cheese ended up being for sale. And Showbiz thought, hey, we'll buy it. And they did. So by the mid 80s, they had bought Chuck E. Cheese and they started merging. So there was a point in the 80s for a couple of years, the late 80s, that uh, they were merging the two mascots. <laughs> Long story short, Chuck E. Cheese ended up wanting to get rid of Creative Engineering. And Creative Engineering owned the show portion of the company. So they phased it out and they rebranded as just Chuck E. Cheese. So Creative Engineering got cut out of showbiz. Chuck E. Cheese took over and made all the showbiz into Chuck E. Cheese. And the rest is history. So what Creative Engineering did probably in an attempt to, I don't know, muddle the playing field. They sold the Rock of Fire Explosion to several startup chains, um, three different ones. And unfortunately, one by one, they all just ended up closing down because Chuck E. Cheese is a behemoth and he got his way. But one of those chains was Billy Bob's Wonderland. And there's just one left and the whole nation, and this is it. Here in a little town of West Virginia, you can still come see what made Showbiz Pizza Place so great as a kid. Now, the animatronics are not in great shape, but for something that's been working every day for 30 years, they're not bad either. Um, there is a new Rockefeller Explosion hole set up at a bar in Kansas City. Uh, we'll like to see that eventually, but it's really cool to be here in front of a vintage one, the only vintage one outside of a collector's. It's the only one in the context it was originally designed for, a pizza slash arcade place. pizza and I tried this cheese bread and so far the cheese bread is way better than the pizza oh my god this cheese bread's amazing this cheese garlic bread so good good and cheesy this place is awesome
Ooh, that pizza sloppy. Sing to me, Billy Bob. again at the Smitty Super Service Station. Never thought I'd see it again. So cool. I'm nine again. Go find my mom to get me more tokens. My inner child's having a ball. There's an oldie. I think that's been here since the beginning. Spider. 
Better stop. I remember that one. Sink the Titanic. The Cyclone. I remember that. This was a fun game to get a lot of tickets on. tokens and they actually say Billy Bob's Wonderland on them. Pretty cool. Got a t-shirt. Because you're not going to not get a t-shirt at Billy Bob's Pizza Wonderland. Cutting my losses. Bell's uh. two minute drill. Wow. Come on. Do you have what it takes to be an NFL quarterback? Probably not. Takes the snap. He's under pressure. Woo! Not a single one. First and goal. Got a ten thousand pointer. Was awesome. Man, that was pretty cool. I know there's lots of places that are probably better than that, but just for nostalgia's sake, that was like the best time ever. I really, really liked that. I do wish the animatronics were in a bit better shape, but I totally get why they're in the shape they're in. It's hard to find people to work on them for one thing. It's probably very costly to find someone to work on them. And you know, they get use every day giving kids joy. And uh, I think that's neat. And that's exactly what they were designed to do. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Set Streets and Eats. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on down the road.